Hey guys, let me uh, share with you the slides I talked about on Monday about pointers, uh, malloc, free, and struct, and also introduce you to the in-class exercise we were going to do today, but we can't because of the weather. So, first of all, um, let's say we have three car stars in our program that point to predefined strings. What happens when you do something like this is the memory gets allocated somewhere for each of the characters in these strings, but then the variable a gets set to a pointer that points to the first character in that set. And then of course b is a pointer that points to the next, and c is a pointer that points to the next. And if the memory is packed in tight, if let's say this character h is at memory location 100, this would be 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, and then the t would be at 106. So these would get packed in. Now that doesn't always happen because sometimes things get aligned on like word boundaries or long word boundaries depending on the architecture and so on, but but basically the memory gets allocated in some way and A, B, and C are pointers that point to the locations of these characters. Now A, B, and C also have addresses, so A could be 172 and if the pointers are um, let's say 8 bytes then uh, B would be at 180, and then C would be at 188. Those would be the addresses of the pointers, the car stars. If I went ahead and allocated an array of car stars to store these pointers, A, B, and C, then th that array would have pointers to the addresses of the pointers. So these are pointers to pointers. So you could also think of, of D as a car star star, right? A is a car star. D is an array of car stars, so that means it's a car star star. So you could, for example, define a, a variable PTR for pointer that's a car star star and just assign it to D because D is also effectively a car star star. And then you could iterate through this array of pointers by looking at star pointer to see if it becomes null. If it's not null, you could use it as a car star. And then you can increment it, you can do math on it, you can add integers to it, and the way pointer arithmetic works, it will increase its pointed, its pointiness will increase by a, a, the size of a pointer. So when you increment star pointer, or when you increment pointer, it points to the next thing in the array. So it, it sort of works naturally if you have an array of these guys. So if you run this program, you'll see this following up. All right. Now, what about the main program in a C in a C uh, executable has arguments? Those are argc and argv, and it turns out argc is the number of car stars in the vector or the array argv. So argv is an array of car stars. That means it's a car star star, and you can declare it in that way, and you can treat it as an array syntactically, or you can treat it as a pointer to uh, some car stars, a, a collection of car stars. So you can refer to it in this way. Um, and this will go through and print out all the arguments on the command line. So the first argument, arg0, of course, is uh, actually that should be argv0. I should have put a v there, but I put argv. <coughs> I put uh, just arg. Um, that uh, is the command itself, and then one, two, three, and four are the are the four guys uh, on the command line. One, two, three, four, like so. So, indeed, one of the reasons the first project was a project about arrays of car stars is that the command line arguments to a C program are nothing other than arrays of car stars. I want to remind you about malloc and free. Malloc is a function that uh, it, actually this is a clickable link in the slideshow. So if you want to click on the link. Um, oh, it's no longer a working link. Never mind. Forget I said that. Um, so it, it was. A, I'll, I'll go back and fix it. Um, it was a link last year and it worked okay. This allocates size bytes of memory. It returns a non-null pointer if it's successful and null if it's not. And free is the opposite. It frees the memory. You pass in a pointer that you got from malloc and it frees the associated memory. A couple of notes. You always need to check the return value from malloc to make sure it's not null before you use it. You need to cast the return value to a pointer of appropriate type. Uh, this is not actually a rigid requirement, but it's a nice documentation to have so that someone reading the code knows that you're getting a pointer of the appropriate type. 
and you need to free the memory when you're finished. What I like to do after I call free is assign the freed pointer to null so I know for sure that it's been freed and I don't accidentally try to free the same non-null pointer twice, which will probably cause a segmentation fault. So there is that. Here's an example. If we uh, allocate some memory, let's say <coughs> I want to allocate memory for the arguments to my program, I could let n items be argc minus 1. I could allocate it up memory for those pointers. Then I can copy the pointers into my array. I could iterate through my array now and print those guys out, and then I can free my array. Now, why you don't, I don't know why you'd ever want to do this, because argv already exists. I don't need to make a copy to use it. But this is just an example of how you can create an, create an array with memory, copy things into it, and when you're done, free it. And then don't forget to set the pointer to null just to be tidy. Okay? So that's the idea. Uh, these two paragraphs are from our textbook, uh, and it describes a structure. A structure is a little bit like a class. I think you probably encountered them in, in your 155 class. Basically, you can define uh, a thing that's made up of other uh, variables. So we can have a point structure. We're going to learn next week how to use user divine types using typedef to make this a little tidier. But for now, I don't want to jump to that chapter, so I'm just going to use the definition in chapter 11. <clears throat> you can make more than one variable and you, uh, by saying struct point and then putting more variables on the line. Or if you've defined struct point earlier in the program, you can define multiple instances of the struct using struct point as if it were a type. So that's that idea. Assignment 2, uh, we talked about in class a little bit. It's a little bit like Project 1, except instead of dealing with arrays of pointers to strings, we're dealing with arrays of pointers to these person structures. A person structure is defined in the implementation header file. You want to be able to get the length of an array of person structures. You want to compare two arrays of person structures. You want to be able to copy one array of person structures, an array of pointers to person structures, to another array of pointers to person structures. Notice these are person star, struct person star stars. So that's an array of pointers to person structures. This is an array of pointers to person structures. And the way we're going to, uh, the convention we're going to use in this project is that if you have an array of pointers to person structures, the array goes until you hit the first null pointer. The null pointer is the terminator or the delimiter that tells you when you get to the end of the list. Finally, this the, really these three are fairly easy functions. This last one is the only tricky bit. You're going to write a uh, function sort by field that sorts an array of person structure pointers in order of a particular field of the person structure. And that field is uh, determined by an enum that enumerates the various uh, names of the field. So there's, I think in the person structure, there's a name, there's a birth date, and there's a GPA. So um, you're going to be able to sort by any of those three things. And you're not going to sort the person structures, you're going to sort the pointers so that the order of the pointers is in the order of the values of the various fields. Got it? If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Here's the definition of the person structure. Person is a car star for a name, an, a substructure, a date, a date is a month, day, and a year, and then uh, a float for the GPA. And here are the definitions of the functions. And there's the enum that lists the name, the birth date, and the GPA. These are just define so that you can call the sort by field function with that enum to tell it what to sort by. That's really it. Okay, and that's all I have for you in this show. Okay, so here I am in cloud nine. I wanted to go through a few programs. Let's see, let's go back to Hello World. I just wanted to show you these three examples um, that we talked about in the slides and just see what they look like in cloud nine. Um, so here we have the hello there Sam, um, we have the array of car stars, that means car star stars, here I'm assigning pointer to D, and then I'm iterating through those guys. If I just run this thing, it goes and it prints out hello there Sam. Okay, I wanted to point out that if you click to the left of some of these numbers, like this 6 here, it sets a breakpoint. And if you click on the little bug icon here and run it, the program will run until it hits that breakpoint, and then you can actually inspect 
just notice that A doesn't point to anything, B doesn't point to anything, but I can actually step through the program here. This little step over icon lets me step. And you can actually watch the pointers fill in here. And then D now is uh, all zeros. It was junk before. And if I pull that out, let's see if I can. There we go. Now you can see that D is actually getting filled in with the three strings. Now pointer is going to get assigned. Right now it points to junk, but if I assign it to D, that is the address of D. And now I can iterate through that list and it will print out hello. Pointer get it. Notice pointer is getting incremented and uh, it's printing out the strings. So that's how that thing works. And I should have just said go. There you go. So here's another example. This is from the, the slides of a program that has command line arguments. And uh, if I just run it with no command line arguments, of course, it does nothing. It just prints out that the name of the program is what's given. But the fun thing is, it, in Cloud9, I can type some uh, arguments here. One, two, three, four, whatever. And if I run it from the runner down here, it actually uses those command line arguments. So I can, uh, you can see that argc is five, and uh, so it's zero, one, two, three, four, and the loop here just goes from zero to four, and so on. Um, so, and you can also see that I spelled it this this time. I spelled it argv plus i. That's a pointer arithmetic. Argv is the base of the array. I'm adding i to it. That moves me forward in the array by i's pointer pointer distances, pointer sizes, and then star gives me the value. That's equivalent to the array indexing notation, which I could use this way. So that, if I, I can run it either way, it gives me exactly the same result. So argv sub i and argv plus i star, star uh, expression, argv plus i, are the same thing. So I wanted you to see how that works. And finally, I had an in-class exercise I wanted you guys to do. <clears throat> so we define a structure for student. I define a function that seeds the random number generator. Uh, the random number generator is called um, rand, and srand is the seed. Time is a function that returns the current time in seconds since the epoch, I think, is what it gives you. So every time you run the program, you get a different seed, and that means you're running with different random numbers. So we're, this is a trick we're going to uh, use later in the semester when we start doing random number distributions and things like that. But it's a useful trick. Uh, we call the seed ran function that uh, seeds the random number generator. I'm going to initialize the uh, student array. It's, a, it's an array. Let's see. It's, this is just an array of students, so it's a pointer to uh, an array of student objects. Okay, student objects. So this is a student star. Um, what I want you to do is replace this null with malloc. So you're going to come in here and you're going to type malloc, and then you're going to put in the necessary arithmetic to calculate the amount of memory to reserve for a series of uh, student pointers, but what I want you to do is to get the names of the students from the command line. So you're going to come down here and type the names of the students on the command line. You're going to use argc to figure out how many student records, student structures to save space for, allocate an array of student structures, check to make sure the allocation works, and then what I'd like you to do is to go through the array, assign the name of each student, because each student's name is a car star, so you can use the argv to assign those names, and then calculate a random GPA for the student between 0 and 4, and then iterate through that array and print out the uh, name and the GPA. I want you to come up with a format string to do that, and then don't forget to free the array and to reset the pointer to null. So all the cleanup is going to happen down here. So please give that a try. And uh, now one thing I will point out, this is a little bit, uh, this is not a perfect solution, just copying the pointer over to the structure because we don't know, uh, 
it, it would be better to allocate memory for the name and to use strcpy to copy the string into that memory and then free the memory. But this is a cheap way. We're all in the same function, so the argv array is, is not going to go anywhere while this function is running. So it's okay just to copy the pointer in this case. But in the future, when we're copying or creating structures with car stars in them, it's better to allocate memory for that car, that array, and, uh, and copy the characters over. Anyway, you see how this works. You only have to do two things. Do the malloc, and then, uh, well, three things. Do the malloc, fix up this formatting string to print the names and the GPAs out, and then tidy up when you're done. And that's all there is to it.